Well, my toddler is turning three years old next month, and she, this will be her first birthday party because her first two have been canceled due to COVID. So we're going all out. We're not talking about spending a ton of money. We're just talking about making it very extra. So uh, she has chosen a rainbow theme for her party. She loves all things rainbow. So I'm making rainbow decor, rainbow DIY kits, all of the rainbow glow forge things. So here we are. Uh, today, uh, our tutorial is going to focus on a rainbow um name DIY kit. Okay. Now I used to sell a ton of these and I did it with a hand-drawn rainbow, but I'm going to show you how to do it making your rainbow entirely in Illustrator and also adding some cutie little clouds. So we're going to start with an ellipse, our ellipse tool, and actually yours might be a rectangle. So click and hold. Uh, if yours looks like rectangle, that's fine. And choose that ellipse tool. We're going to start with a five inch by five inch ellipse, which is of course just a circle. Okay, and we're going to get rid of our our stroke. So this this right hand color is the stroke color. Come over not to white, but to none. Okay, this one with the, the sort of zero fill in it. And white is not the most, you know, visible. So we're going to change it to something super bright. And by super bright, I mean that hurts my eyes. So I'm going to click on it and actually refine it to a light pink. Okay, so uh, I'm actually going to make a sample out of um, a wooden background with pastel acrylic on it, but at the party, they'll actually cut out their own and I'm sorry, I'll cut it out in wood and they will paint it and do all that, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and let's, we have our five inch circle. We are going to do, there, there are lots of techniques you could do that, do for this, but just to keep us focused, we're going to go to object path, offset path, and we're going to do a negative half inch offset. Okay, and you see I have my preview box checked. So when I get out of this um, uh, dimension box, it'll preview the size of um, your offset. Now I like this thickness as a, a rainbow stripe, but if you want yours thicker or thinner, feel free to play around with that and adjust. This part does not so much matter. You can have it at miter or round or whatever. All right, go ahead and hit okay. Now, if you click just anywhere in the white space out here, then you hover over. OK, you'll be able to see your original five inch uh, circle and your new four inch circle. I'm sorry, four and a half inch circle created by wait, four inch circle <laughs> because you had uh, you took a half inch offset and it took a half inch from both sides. OK, um, and so we're going to just click and drag to select both or you can command A on a Mac, control A on a PC. And we're going to go to the Pathfinder panel and click to minus front. OK, so now we have a circle. Um, that doesn't have a center okay and we are going to continue so the next stripe we could start with a four inch circle but then there would be no white space in between and i like a little white space in between so instead of a four inch circle i'm going to do a 3.75 inch circle you'll see that my width and height proportion lock is on so i don't have to put 3.75 in each box but if yours is not either enable it or make sure you uh, adjust both of those okay so now select tool, um, object, path, offset path. We're going to keep that same half inch offset because I want all of my rainbow stripes to be the same width. Okay, click off somewhere in the white space. Click and drag till you get both of your, um, your shapes and Pathfinder minus front. Okay, you can go ahead and put it in or in fact, um, you can select both of those. Command A, Control A or click and drag and come up to your align tool, horizontal align center, vertical align center, and if you don't have this little panel like I do, object align is where you want, okay? And now it's right in the center, and if you want, for visualization purposes, you can come on over and change the color. So maybe you're doing um, pink and orange, and then, okay, so now we're going to create our next our next rainbow stripe. And instead of doing 2.75, we're actually gonna do 2.5. Again, that's just to leave us a little bit of blank space in between our stripes. Um, and if you don't want that blank space, then you know adjust accordingly. Uh, we're going to do the same object path, offset path. We're going to do that same negative half inch, okay? Use your select tool, click off, um, click. Oh, I actually need to make sure I didn't accidentally move that when I, wandered okay so click and drag make sure you're not selecting your other this part right here which i did so we need to do a more careful click and drag okay and now again minus front in your pathfinder go ahead and recolor if you want so let's see red orange yellow i don't know if i have a light yellow but i think i do okay 
And then you can select it all and align it if you want to. Now for our last one, we're not going to do um, an offset. We're just going to do the circle itself. So let's just see what it suggests us to make. So two and a half. So um, instead of one and a half, we're going to do 1.25. Do you see how I have to talk myself through that this every single time to make sure that I <laughs> leave that space? That's just fine. Okay. And now we're going to recolor it and let's make it um, like a green color. Okay, cool. And we can go ahead and just align it all again if you want. So now we have this lovely hmm, concentric circle set, which is not at all a rainbow, is it? So you can absolutely do this uh, next step in any number of ways, but I'm going to show you one way. Instead of an ellipse tool, click a rectangle tool. Okay, you've got all, all of your circles are all um, aligned beautifully. Uh, if you kind of slowly drag your cursor here across, you'll see this magenta smart guide, if you have smart guides enabled, uh, smart guide pop up. Um, mine is at the exact center of these little circles here. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag and just come across. Okay, now this is going to be a little a little tedious, but it'll it'll get the job done. Again, are there other ways you can do this? Yes, there are. But here's the way I'm showing you. So Make sure that you use your select tool, click that rectangle and copy it. So a couple ways to do this, Command C on a Mac, Control C on a P PC or edit copy. All right, it's important that you have that copied so you don't have to redraw it every single time. Okay, and now you're going to do that minus front on each of your different stripes. And no, you cannot um, Pathfinder Unite and just do it all at once. You just have to do it individually. So here we go. So click. Um, your your first uh, circle, hold down the shift key and click the rectangle. You can also just click and drag. Okay, uh, Pathfinder minus front. All right, now we have a lovely rainbow stripe. Edit, paste in place. It's important that you do paste in place, not just paste, okay? Because you want it to go back to the exact same spot. Do the same thing with your orange, okay? So click, hold down shift, click, minus front. Edit, paste in place, okay? Click. Hold down shift, click, mm -hmm. minus front, edit, paste in place last time, okay? Click, shift, click, minus front. And now you have this really lovely, beautiful, gorgeous, delightful rain rainbow, okay? Uh, did I almost say reindeer right there? I did. So this is cool, I like this. If you want a really simple rainbow shape with no clouds, skip past this part where I'm about to make us some clouds, okay? Um, I wanted to add clouds to my rainbow DIY kits. So we're going to start with an ellipse. It doesn't particularly matter what size because we're going to do a bunch of different sizes and then just kind of resize it accordingly. I'm going to make it this really light gray color so I can get a sense for the, um, uh, again, how it will look with everything. Um, I may just use white acrylic when I print mine, but we'll see. Uh, all right, so then just copy and paste that circle, um, resize it. So hold down shift so it resizes proportionally and you don't end up with a bunch of ellipses. And here we go. And then just drag it into place. You don't have a stroke set, so you should be able to kind of visualize pretty easily what this uh, cloud will look like when you're finished with it. All right. Um, and you can just keep copy pasting and resizing, making sure that you're preserving your proportions. Um, and then I think we'll just re, I think we'll just copy paste that middle one for the other side. Okay, so I don't like to overthink my clouds. And what I mean by that is that I always overthink my clouds. <laughs> so I try not to um, by just, you know, putting an arrangement together and calling it done. You could absolutely mess with this for a half hour or 45 minutes or 13 years if you wanted to, but please just love yourself. <laughs> just, 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 Put an arrangement that looks okay and stop. Now, once you've got an arrangement that looks okay or even magnificent, go ahead and select all of those. And so I'm gonna click and drag, all right, um, and use your Pathfinder Unite button. You might have it up here. You might even have it um, Window Pathfinder. I don't know if I said that earlier, okay? So now you have a really cute cloud. I think it's lovely. We're gonna, it's not the right size. <laughs> so let's resize it real quick. Um, but we can sh hold down shift and at any of these little edges or corners, not if it's got the curvy arrow, but if it's got the straight arrow like this, that will let you resize. Okay. And I like to have it kind of up. 
you can, of course, play around with your cloud placement just like everything else. And once you've got it where you think you like it, go ahead and copy that cloud, paste it, and then we're going to mirror it. All right, so I have my transform panel over here. If you don't, I'll show you in a second what to do, but I'm going to use that flip horizontally. Okay, and come right up. Um, if you don't have it, you can go object, transform, reflect, and it'll um, bring up a, a panel for you, okay? And you can use that same thing. Okay, so now that you have your two clouds, you might need to move things around a little so that it looks right to you. OK, so for me, here's what I like to I like to to think about with this. Um, I like all of the stripes, including the center, not stripe, the center half half circle thing here. Let's zoom in. Um, I like to get to all touch the cloud and this. I don't know if you see this little white space between the, the green and the cloud. I don't love that. So I'm going to move these up. Boop, boop, boop. Just like that. And it looks great to me. Now, I'm eyeballing the placement. And if you have watched my even any other tutorials, you know that I'm terrible at this. So I'm just going to make sure using the tools that Illustrator gives us that everything's perfectly placed. So let's start with our clouds. So click, hold down shift, click. OK, so now we have both of our clouds selected. And I'm going to come over to the align panel and make sure that they're vertically aligned, centered. OK, and that one isn't way up here or way down there. So that's great. Now that they are, I'm going to uh, select them both again and come to object group object group because I want them to be treated like one thing and then I'm going to select everything so I just clicked and dragged but you can also um, there's there are a million ways but yeah click and drag to select them all and now I'm going to horizontal align center and see how it moved it over just the smidgiest tiniest bit okay so now it is perfectly aligned and everything is even and beautiful and and lovely okay now here's the thing Depending on what you want your sign to look like, you can either stop here and change everything to strokes and be done. But what I want, I want for mine is I want these stripes to be here and then I want these clouds to nestle in. I don't want them to be glued on top. OK, I want my stripes um, to kind of be cut out, uh, cut out so that the cloud just nestles up in there. OK, so we're going to repeat the same process that we did earlier. Except before we do that, we need to select our clouds. I know that they're already grouped, but grouping and uniting are slightly different. So go over to your Pathfinder panel and unite. And that's going to make them truly, truly be thought of as one item, okay? And we're going to do the same thing that we did with our rectangle earlier when we cut all these circles in half, okay? We're gonna do the same thing. So select your cloud, copy it, you want both clouds and copied. So Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, or just Edit Copy. Okay, and then you're going to one by one cut out that cloud shape from each of these stripes. Okay, so starting with pink for me, or starting with your outer one. It doesn't actually matter, but for me that's what I'm doing. Okay, so click, hold down Shift, and click your clouds, and come to Pathfinder minus front. See, and now you have this alarming looking shape, <laughs> but it will look fine. So edit, paste in place. Remember to paste it in place. Do the same thing with your next stripe. So click it, hold down shift, click your clouds, Pathfinder minus front. Edit, paste in place. Okay, click your next uh, stripe, hold down shift, click your clouds, Pathfinder minus front, edit, paste in place. I bet you can guess what we're gonna do here. Click it, Hold down shift, click your cloud, Pathfinder minus front, edit, paste in place. Now, for me, I'm okay if there's like a little wiggle room in there uh, for, uh, like I'm okay, I'm okay if there's a tiny bit of space once the laser cuts out my stripes and cuts out my clouds, I'm okay with that. If you're not, you need to account for curve. That's beyond the scope of this YouTube channel. Uh, Big Blue Laser Designs has awesome YouTube channels, or my uh, FileMakers Academy course goes really deep into Kerf. But again, I think for most purposes, this will be fine. So now let's keep going. Okay, I'm gonna make my sample one. Uh, as beautiful as this looks, this is not really a Glowforge ready file, is it? It's not. So go ahead and select everything. I recommend that you select a none fill and the same color stroke for everything. So I'm going to do black because that's what I usually use as my cut strokes. Okay. Um, now I want to add. So for mine, I'm going, I'm going to be doing a 10 inch 
backing. So a 10 inch ellipse backing. Okay, and so I just wanna get everything placed nice and lovely. All right, and actually let's go ahead and just zoom back into our rainbow for a minute. We're gonna just group everything. So you can just click and drag to select or hold down shift as you select everything. Make sure you don't Pathfinder Unite right here. You want an object group. And the reason for that is that I just want it placed all nice and lovely. So select everything, go to the align panel, center it, horizontal align center. I don't want it vertically centered because I don't want it in the center of my, of my circle. Okay, I'm happy with this. And actually I think we can even make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to select my grouped rainbow. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm gonna get any of these corners or edges where I have a straight arrow. And I'm gonna make it just that bit bigger. Okay, and then if you want to be extra careful, like I always like to be extra careful, go ahead and just realign and it's fine. Okay, so now it's time to add a name. Now there's going to be one little tiny baby there who is too small um, to make her own DIY kit. So I'll use her name as the, um, as the sample. Her name is Daisy and I'm using little dinosaur font and I'm doing all capitals just so that visually it uh, looks looks nice and then I'm going to just right click create outlines if you're using a script font make sure to come over here in Pathfinder click to unite you might notice that Daisy's name is really thin and I'm nervous about how this is going to work out uh, I don't want my um, letters to scorch so I'm going to add an offset so object path offset path and I think point let's try point oh three yes point oh three makes it nice and sturdy while still preserving the character of uh, the font. So now just click off and then click and drag to select all of the letters. And the reason that we clicked off and clicked back on is to make sure that we pick up the uh, original font plus the offset. Come on over to Pathfinder and click to unite. I'm zooming out again and um, swap your fill and stroke. All right, so here we go. We're not done yet. <laughs> uh, so. At this point, you see that there's a big space between the daisy and the rainbow. We could absolutely make Daisy's name just that much bigger. And in fact, I like that, so, so there we go. Um, other things you could do would be to bring the rainbow down a little bit. You just wanna make sure it's visually pretty balanced. Make sure, click your rainbow, make sure it's all still grouped. Make sure that your name is acting as one shape. And then we're just going to go ahead and uh, center everything again. So select it all align horizontal align center do not vertically align center or everything will end up right in the center right right in the middle there but i think this looks really nice so you have your um your shapes here but this is not how it's going to cut out if we tried to cut this out it would be one circle with all these little bits just punched out and that's not really what we're looking for here so what i'm going to do is copy paste move it off of this and then we need to object ungroup it and just move it apart a little bit, okay? We can move an object and group those clouds so that you can manipulate them individually. Now, if you are making um, yours out of wood, and I will, again, I'll, I'm making for the party, uh, the DIY kits will be made out of wood, and so I would just keep it all on the same sheet, just like this, and just kind of make sure there's enough space that things won't, won't char up. Um, and then do the same with your name. Okay, and we're copy pasting instead of moving it off because we're going to use these original uh, shapes to put scored placement lines so kids know where to kind of glue things down. Now, if you think your kids will not pay attention to that anyway, you can feel free to just delete and just do a big circle. But I'm hoping that <laughs> the kids in my group will, you know, pay attention to it at least a little. So object, ungroup each letter. I'm doing this just to save cut space. So if that's important to you, if you don't want to waste a bunch of room, you want to ungroup and then select and just drag them over so that they're as close to each other as makes sense. Okay, so once you're, you're satisfied with that, come back over here and that's grouped already. This is grouped already. So what we're going to do is start with our rainbow and do an offset path again. Object path, offset path. This time we're doing a negative 0.04. Okay, and then make sure everything is showing up. It is hit okay. Before you click off, go ahead and just change it to a different color. We're not cutting this part out, we're scoring it. So we want it to, um, to be a different color than all of the things that need to be cut. Before you do anything else, copy. So either Command C, Control C, or Edit Copy, and then just delete it. And then just delete that too. 
and then edit paste in place. Okay, so now what you have is scored lines. It's got a negative offset. So when you glue this over that, it, these little scored lines will not show up. If you don't do an offset and just leave the original lines that we did, it will show. That's because when the laser goes to cut this out, it removes some material. So um, let's say that this was half an inch across, right? Uh, after the laser goes across it, it's actually going to be slightly smaller than that. And if you have those original lines over here, it's just going to look like a mess. Okay, please take my word for it. Take the extra step and do the negative offset path. Okay, same thing with Daisy here. So object, path, offset path. We're going to do that same negative 0.04 inch offset. If it's um, making certain of your things disappear, you can do a different one. But just start with negative 0.04 and see how it works for you. Again, change it to a green stroke. Again, copy it, delete it, delete the original, and then edit, paste in place. And now you're done. This is it. This is a Glowforge ready file. Let's go ahead and file, save as. We are going to save it. Let's see here. Um, Rainbow DIY Kit Daisy. Oop, not Diazzy. That's not a. That's not her name. And then um, I actually always save as an illustrator first. Then you're going to do the same thing. File save as. Make sure you're not exporting. Save as an SVG. I don't want this on my desktop, actually. I want it in my Creative Cloud files. Um, and then when you hit save, options will pop up. SVG 1.0 is what you want. And then you need to make sure responsiveness is unchecked so that it doesn't resize in your Glowforge interface. That's it, guys. Whew. I know this is a long slog, but isn't it so cute when it's all finished? Um, I hope that you make your own versions. If you do, please, please share it with me. You can um, share it on Instagram. Tag me at the fable tree or you can email it to me um, or Facebook, whatever. It just just share it with me somehow so that I can see it and share your beautiful DIY kit. And I will try to remember to, to grab a picture once the little ones do it at um, Freya's party. And I'll try to remember to share a picture later on. Whew. All right. That's it for this week. Um, see you next time.